Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll show how to annotate objects with bounding boxes on a simple project. You'll see how to follow task instructions, choose the right drawing method, and use filters and hotkeys to speed up the workflow. Let's get started. Open the instructions by clicking the Guide button. Here are the conditions. It is required to annotate vehicles and people using bounding boxes. The bounding box boundaries must be precise with minimal gaps and objects occluded by more than 50% must be marked as occluded. Lastly, only the visible parts of objects need to be annotated. Below, examples of bad and good annotations are provided. Let's close the guide and start annotating the task. When a task involves multiple classes, it is best to annotate them sequentially. First annotate all objects of the first class, then the second, then the third, and so on. This approach helps minimize missed objects, as it allows you to focus on one class at a time without being distracted by others. On the toolbar, activate the Bounding Box tool. Let's start annotation with the Vehicle class, keeping the two-point drawing method and the annotation mode set to Shape. It is best to begin with distant objects, as they are generally harder to annotate and recognize. Additionally, if we start with objects in the foreground, their annotation may obstruct the background objects, making them harder to identify. Scroll up to zoom in on the image. Using the red lines that extend from the mouse cursor, locate the object's boundaries, place the first point, and then complete the bounding box by aligning its edges with the object's boundaries and placing the second point. After placing the second point, the bounding box will be created and appear in the object panel on the right. If necessary, you can interact with it further. This vehicle is occluded by more than 50%, so it needs to be marked as occluded. You can do this by clicking the corresponding icon on the object. Alternatively, right-click on the bounding box to open its properties, then click this icon to mark the object as occluded. Now the bounding box edges will appear as dashed lines, indicating that the occluded property is active. Annotate the next vehicle in the same way. It is also occluded by more than 50%. To avoid opening the object properties repeatedly, you can use the Q hotkey to activate the occluded property, ensuring the desired object is highlighted first. Continue annotating in the same manner. If an object is not fully annotated, you can adjust the size of the bounding box by dragging its edges. We have annotated the last vehicle in the frame. Now, we need to annotate people. To prevent vehicle annotations from interfering, we can hide their visibility, for example using filters. Click the Filters button, add the rule Label equals Person, and click Submit. Now, only objects with the Person label will be displayed. Let's begin annotating people. Select the Bounding Box tool on the toolbar again, change the label to Person, and then click Shape. As with vehicles, start annotating distant and occluded objects. Remember to set the occluded property for heavily occluded objects using the Q hotkey. Hold down the control key when the desired object is highlighted. This will lock the focus on the object, allowing you to continue interacting with it even if the mouse pointer moves outside its boundaries.
we have annotated the last object in the frame. Now we can turn off the filter and review the result. Since tasks rarely consist of a single frame, let's move to the next frame and continue annotating. To switch to the next frame, you can click the right arrow on the player button or use the F hotkey, which is faster. The last annotated object was a bounding box with the person label, so we don't need to change anything. We can press N right away to continue annotating. People in the foreground occupy a large part of the frame. Let's annotate them using the four-point method, as it is unlikely we can precisely align the bounding box edges with just two points due to limited visibility of the object's edges when zoomed in. Using this method, focus on each edge of the object individually. Move the image as needed, using the middle mouse button to find the edges. Once you find one, place a point and search for the next. If part of the object is cropped by the frame, you can place the point outside the frame, then CVAT will move the point to the edge of the frame. Having finished this frame, move on to the next by pressing F. This area is quite dark and object boundaries are poorly visible. Click the arrow at the bottom of the canvas to open the color settings. Here, you can adjust the image's color and brightness. Let's increase the gamma. Now, the object boundaries are more distinguishable. Continue annotating using the standard two-point method. So we have completed the annotation of the final frame and explored the key methods of working with bounding boxes in various conditions. Don't forget to save the annotation. Remember, the accuracy and precision of annotations directly affect the quality of the data you create for training models. Make use of tools, filters, and hotkeys to optimize the process and make it more efficient. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Good luck with your projects and see you in the next lessons.